I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. I've worked with members of Congress with major unions throughout the United States in the administrative level. Therefore, I'm going to remain anonymous. I have never encountered a Bigfoot, but my mother did. I was only a child when this happened, but I vividly remember it. I will recount this experience to the best of my memory. I was born and raised in a southern West Virginia coal camp in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains. I may be prejudiced, but looking back on life, I realized that we grew up in paradise. I desperately miss my West Virginia hills, the fresh air, the beauty of the mountains, and breathtaking vistas at every turn. When we were kids, before the electronic trappings of today, we entertained ourselves by just playing with each other and those beautiful mountains were our playground. We regularly played Tarzan, swinging on the grapevines. We would head to the woods for a game of hide-and-seek or to role-play the latest TV episode of Daniel Boone. We all also knew the location of the best berry patches, morale mushrooms, wild grains, roots, ginseng, apple trees, as well as many other of nature's bounty outside our door, and we visited them regularly. Everyone raised a garden in the rich mountain soil and had a few chickens. Looking back, we had culinary bounty right outside our back door. We were not wealthy in material things, being children of poor coal miners, but we were rich in so many other ways. No one in the coal camp had much more than the next, so we didn't realize we were considered poor. Life was good, and we lived it to the fullest. Our father worked at the local coal mine, and we shopped at the company store, which was one stone's throw from our house. We lived in the former superintendent's house on a hill overlooking the company store. The houses along our street were the best in the community, being the homes reserved for the mine managers. Because these homes were elevated on the hillside to overlook the miners' homes in the coal camp, our house butted up against the forest. Dense woods surrounded us from behind our home to the top of the mountain, and we explored them regularly. This was around July of 1966, the year before the Patterson-Gimlin film of what became known as Bigfoot even surfaced. It all began on a warm summer day when my older brother, who was 15, my older sister, 11, and I was the youngest at 8, decided to walk around the strip mine road above our home to look for blackberry patches. The local coal company had discovered a seam of coal on the mountainside above our home and strip mined it a few years earlier, leaving an indelible scar on our beautiful mountain. The strip road left behind was an invitation to the coal camp kids for many activities and mischief. We knew if we found enough blackberries, Mum would treat us to one of her wonderful blackberry cobblers and maybe some blackberry jam for enjoying later in the winter months. So off we went with our baskets in hand to see if we could find enough blackberries along the hillsides of the old strip mine road. My father had recently been injured in a mining accident and had a full leg cast, just one of many injuries he sustained in a mountain bump in the mine. For those not familiar with coal mining terms, a mountain bump are sometimes known as a pressure bump or rock outburst occurs when a sudden release of pressure from the overburden of the mountain occurs. This most happens when the mine is deep under the mountain with lots of overburden and a sudden sandstone mine roof that does not fall as you retreat the mine. Any old miner will tell you that you want the roof to fall as you retreat to relieve this pressure. When you don't get the roof to fall, mountain bumps sometimes occur, which are sudden violent releases of pressure and the weakest coal pillar. These occur most often in the western United States, but due to the huge mountains and deep mines in southern West Virginia, we often had mountain bumps too. The reason I know all about this is because I worked as a coal miner with my dad, and I went on to become the very first female coal mine inspector in the United States. But that's a story in itself for another platform. So, back to the Bigfoot story. My mom decided she wanted Dad to drive her into town to shop and run some errands. She told Dad that he would have to drive her to the start of the strip road so she could find and retrieve us kids to go along with them. The strip road was too rough for our old 1960 Chevrolet Impella, and she would have to walk around the road until she found us and bring us back to the car so we could all go to town. So, Dad drove her as far as he could and waited by the car on his crutches until she retrieved us and came back to the car for our trip into town. 
My mother didn't know this, but we had walked to the end of the strip road and taken a path cut through the woods, which led back down the mountainside to the road where we lived. We made a big loop around and headed back home with baskets full of luscious blackberries. Meanwhile, Mom traveled to the end of the road and noticed our footprints in the dust, which led to the footpath to home. She figured that we were probably back home by now. Being that there were no means of communication back to our dad on the other end of the strip road, she had no choice but to walk back the way she came to the car where dad was waiting. Mom said as she walked back down the road, she began to hear something really big moving through the woods on the mountainside below. She said it sounded really big, like an elephant working its way through the woods. She could tell it was bipedal and kept in step with her as she walked. When she stopped, it would stop. When she sped up, it did the same. Curiosity finally overcame her fear and she climbed up on the berm to get a look at the hillside. There was heavy undergrowth and mountain laurel covering the mountainside, obscuring her view, and she couldn't see anything. She said to add to her terror, everything else in the woods was dead silent, which unnerved her even more. All she could hear was the mirroring of her footsteps. She climbed back up on the berm a few times more to try to get a look at what was following her, but she says she never saw it. By the time she got back to the car, she was in a run, yelling at our dad to start the car. He obviously wanted to know what was wrong, and she told him something really big was following her beneath on the hillside. She told him to get her home so she could make sure her babies were okay. When they got home, we were there, proudly displaying our bounty of blackberries on the kitchen table. Mom thanked the good Lord above for providing protection to us and bringing us all home safely. Our dad, who was a miner, a hunter, and a woodsman, simply stated that it had to have been a black bear. But Mom adamantly explained this was no bear. She never told us what she actually saw, but from that day forward, she forbid us kids from playing in the woods ever again. I can still see her shaking that switch at us, daring us to let her catch any of us up on those woods. She said if the wood booger didn't get us, a timber rattler or a copperhead would, and for certain that switch would be waiting on us when we got home. We never went back to play in the woods except when we had an adult with us. She never spoke of this day anymore or ever came clean about what she actually saw. Looking back, I'm certain that it was a Bigfoot following her. The numerous accounts of sightings that regularly occur in West Virginia and the Appalachian Mountains only confirm this for me. This event occurred over 50 years ago, but we never ever forgot the day that our mama was almost taken by a wood booger. At 53 years of age now, I can still recall an encounter while bow hunting near Burnsville, West Virginia. It was around 1978 on Oil Creek in Braxton County. My in-laws had a small farm they recently purchased for hunting and raising a few beef on. I was on the top of the ridge, which had been cleared for field for hay, and I was walking along the dirt road on top to return back to camp, which was at the bottom of the ridge in the head of the hollow. I could never forget what I was about to see. Looking out way ahead, about 250 yards, on a point toward the small bushes, there was something very large and black laying in around the bushes with knees up and head down, just about 40 yards from the edge of the wood line. Not sure of what I was seeing, I watched just for a short spell, and it got up just like humans do as they get up from the ground. Now that it was up, I could see it was quite large, and then it started toward my direction, around to a small bowl near an apple tree and small woodshed. And during deer season, this just does not happen, as I thought it to be some kind of prank, like people play, so I shouted at this creature, saying, Hey, it's not good to be dressed up out here like that during hunting season, waving my bow. Now, around the apple tree and shed, I determined this thing is at least nine feet tall, walking in a stride of at least five feet a step at a time. I yelled and waved, and it kept coming closer as if I was not even there. And then I saw its face, an awful sight to see, as I can still remember to this day, the length and the deep black leathery look of its face. I'll never forget it. Then I turned downhill and ran, not looking back until reaching the camp at the base of the ridge and about collapsed. Not like some people, I will not joke about this, for what I saw was real, and from the look of that face, I could not imagine it friendly by no means, but I was not going to make the time to find out either, 
and I have never been back to that area to hunt again. I have no idea how it goes undetected for the size it is, but it is real and it looks very mean. I did not smell it as the wind may have been going away from me. I have spent time taking pictures out on the hills around home and enjoying hunting, but now I always carry at least a handgun whenever I walk around now because I can't run like I used to. If you see what I encountered, you would take precaution and safety while you enjoy your time in the woods. Yes, it has been a long time since that day, but it will not leave my memory, even though it's been several years since I saw this creature. I believe after someone has seen such a thing in real life, it becomes unforgettable. The creature was lying down in a similar way, such as a human would, with its knees up and its body flat to the ground. And for its body, I seen it all clearly as it made its way toward me. I had nothing between myself and the creature except grass field mostly. I saw a long face like dark leather with deep, bold cracks with hair surrounding. Its hair was black, about four inches long, covering the body. But there was something I noticed around the top of the shoulder area. Its hair stuck out further than the rest. I have seen sketches and clips of what other people have seen, but the face of this creature was long and brutal looking, very mean look in the face. I was never more afraid as I was then in my whole life. I knew instinctively to run. You just can't forget something like this, and I'm sure others feel the same way that has had an encounter with this creature, but some will not speak of it. Doug Harless March 31st, 2010 Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you have a story you would like to share here, you can email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.